So you've bought one of these to study for your either next amateur radio license or maybe your first ever one. And you've got to remember everything that's in here? Maybe not. Stay tuned to see how you can work smart towards achieving that next or first ever license. Tango Mike, thanks again for tuning in. Or if this is your first time stumbling across this channel, then welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and share and uh, maybe spread the word a bit. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, today I want to come to you from the point of view of, well, studying and trying to get a license. Now, if you're going for your first license, that's the foundation in the UK, or if you're working towards an intermediate or the full license, then study skills are study skills. Now, I'm covering this from the, uh, from the direction of being a, a teacher. I uh, teach in a college, have done for many years, so I know full well what the pressures are like for students, and indeed for myself, having to study towards exams. And in fact, I've done this very recently. Um, I got licensed in 2017, and last year in 2019, I got my full license. So I've done it over a period of two years, all self-taught. I didn't go through clubs or anything. There wasn't a lot of support around here, although I did have a very, very good tutor um, who really helped me a hell of a lot, especially in the, in the first two steps and I got a lot to thank him for. However, here we are. So how do you go about studying for that license? Well, there's one or two things that you can work towards and try and do to help you. So the first thing you have to do is take control. But what that means is become familiar with the syllabus, familiar with the pattern of the exam. The biggest thing that's probably gonna play in your mind as a student is the thought of having to sit there and go through an exam. We all hate it. It's like going to the dentist, isn't it? It's a horrible thing to think about. But more often than not, if you're prepared and if you know what's going to happen, then it's never really quite as bad as you think it's going to be. The one way you can do that with certainly this sort of exam is begin to understand exactly what your exam paper is going to consist of. Now, I don't mean guess the questions, because that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? But get to know um, which uh, topics appear at which parts of the exam. That sounds basic and obvious, but a lot of people don't do that, you know, when it comes to exams, they just plow in and hope. Now, the reason it's a good idea to do that here is in my situation, I hated, as I said, the technical basic stuff. Um, things about diodes and capacitors. Look, I, I'll, I'll level with you. I hate that sort of stuff. It's just not me. Uh, it sends me to sleep. Not that I can't get it, it just sends me to sleep. And I'm, I'm a lazy learner in many ways. I, I've got to engage and enjoy the subject to really do well. I'm an all or nothing guy with that. If it doesn't engage me or really floats my boat, I tend not to bother with it, even though I probably need to. So I thought, oh, right, the full license, that's going to be, or the advanced license, that's going to be, you know, all maths. I'm going to fail this. But until you look at the syllabus, you don't realise. I've got 62 questions, in, and I did the old one, by the way, but the new one will be roughly the same. I had 62 questions. You've got to have 60% to pass, and that's 37 out of 62, all right? Now, of those 62 questions... 12 are about technical basics, which is about, what, just under 20% of the paper. Now, I need 60% to pass. So I began to have a strategy in mind in that I could probably try and scratch up maybe four, even five out of 12 if I'm lucky, but that's fine. Because what I needed to do then is to maximize my results elsewhere in the other 50 questions. If I aim for 70%, that gives me 35 marks out of 50. If I pick up four or five, that's going to get me over the edge of 37 out of 62 to pass. So that's the way I played it. And it sounds risky, but it's also realistic. Because if you know you have certain strengths in an exam, there are certain parts of the topic you're going to get. There are certain parts of, of the syllabus that you're not going to get. Well, really go to town on the things that you're going to get, that you understand and that you know you're going to really soak up. And then do your best on the rest. You know, you're not trying to get 60% in every section of the past. You can offset some against the other. Okay? So I immediately knew I had to really, really get to grips with the remaining 50 questions. Aim for that 35 out of 50. And then I had to be very unlucky not to get 2 out of 12 to pass. Okay? And there were some things, you know, I still needed to learn bits of it, but I didn't try and learn everything to do with those 12 marks in the syllabus. I picked and chose the th sort of things that I knew I'd be able to get. So I probably revised something like about 40% of it, but that's enough to get you maybe four or five marks out of 12. If 
bearing in mind, of course, it's multiple choice. If you went in and just did, just chose questions randomly, you probably end up with 25% of the marks. And that's all I needed to get, really, in terms of that particular 12 mark bit to do with technical basics. So that filled me with confidence and gave me a strategy. It gave me a way of approaching my learning. Okay, so what's the next step? Okay then, so you've bought your study guide and this is now leading me on to step two. That's two. <laughs> so you've got the guide and it's what, 103 pages long? I've got the advanced one, it's the old one, but they're all about the same. Although they get a bit thicker as you get uh, sort of uh, a higher up the license level. But yeah, 103 pages, say 100 pages. You've got to memorise all this, haven't you? No, you don't. And this is where you need your second strategy, is to boil things down, okay? So, uh, what I can do is show you an example of how I boiled something down and how it enabled me to revise it much easier for the exam. So if we take the example of the, the section here of the EMC, okay? And I'm looking at page 93 of the old book here. And uh, I did a couple of, uh, just looking down at my notes, I did a couple of uh, sections uh, to revise here. One on braid breakers, and one on inadequate immunity in the affected device. That's the device that your RF is, uh, is um, interfering with. So, uh, braid breakers. If you look at the book itself, look, we've got three columns, okay? There's a picture up there, but three columns. Whoops, there you go. Now, um, effectively... Each column, if it was a full page, be about, um, I'd say, 150 to 200 words long, maybe more. Probably 250, actually. So I reckon in these three columns alone, there's probably about 400 words there, easily 400 words. And it goes on to the second page as well, a little bit. So it's probably about 500 words in total there, okay? You think 500 words is an awful lot to learn, just for a little bit. Well, that's what you do. What you do, first of all, this is your book, so you can do what you want to it, probably is to highlight, just highlight the bits that you think you need to learn. And in the book, they all, they're well, so I'm not sure about the new ones, but the old ones is to give you a little cap and gown to say you need to learn this bit and learn this bit. So focus on those sections, okay? And just highlight little bits from your highlighter or pen, whatever you've got. And then what do you do? Well, you transfer that, let me just get this, because I got another book, which I bought, a little exercise book. And then I just wrote in stuff about braid breakers. And that came from, you know, just here, most of a page, two thirds of a page, okay? Two thirds of a page there. And just looking at the camera, by the way, which is why my eyes aren't focused directly on you. So apologies if I look a bit, uh, if I'm not focusing directly on the camera. But um, yeah, those two sections there, okay? So about two thirds of a page. And you think, oh, that's all right. You can break that down even more. And don't forget, you've now taken the time to read the first book, write this down, and as you do that, things start to seep in there, okay? And this is what I tell my students to do. And then finally, I use something like this. Now you can use like an exercise, a smaller exercise book, you can use paper, do what you want. But I like these because they all stick together. They're, they're basically what we call uh, revision cards or cue cards, you can call them what you want. And that 500 words has now been distilled down to that one little card, all right? With a few notes. That's it. And of course, what's the point of doing that? Well, first of all, the fact you've read it a couple of times, you've had to write stuff down, you've had to boil it down, as I say, what that effectively means is that you've managed to really assimilate, just understand some of the stuff as you do it. And when it comes to revise, instead of going through a couple of pages in that big book, just look at that. And if you use something like this, it's really handy to take around with you, okay? And uh, there are your cue cards. So I would, recommend that as a way to revise and it works for students doing A-levels, degrees, GCSEs, whatever you're doing. It can work for anything, right? Exams are exams at the end of the day. You've still got to remember stuff, you've still got to revise stuff, haven't you? So that's, a, that's the thing I do. Boiling it down is really, really important, all right? And it makes it more manageable for you. So what else can you do? Step three, of course, is to revise. Now, the golden rule here is quite a simple one. Um, we've all been guilty of this in the past, but don't leave it until a day or two before the exam to revise. Now, by revise, I don't mean come to stuff for the first time. What I mean by revision is go back over the stuff you've already been taught, or if you've had to do it off your own back, the stuff you've read yourself, all right? So you might have been to a club and done a course and things like this, and they've probably done revision sessions with you anyway, or you've done it like me off your own back with the help of a really good tutor. So what do you do? Well, 
instead of doing that marathon sort of two eight hour revision sessions the day or two before the exam it's a little often and that's going back to these cue cards again all right so you know what um, commitments you have work and family wise and everything else my uh, advice to you would be to leave the revision give yourself two weeks at least to revise having done the course or having written everything up in readiness you've got all this ready okay give yourself two weeks do half an hour two or three times a day just go over stuff when you revise a section or you think you've revised the section and gone over it the next day when you do a new section don't leave that by go back to the old section again before you do the new one and you do the same again when you do the third section to revise, you go back over the first and the second ones. So you're just reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing. So by the time you come to say two or three days before the exam, you shouldn't really be doing any brand new revision by then. Hopefully by then you've done your revision. You're just going back over stuff again, just to remind yourself, becoming familiar again. It's, it's nothing new for you in terms of revision, okay? It's stuff you've already revised, you've gone over before, you're just making sure. And then what you can do, of course, is some practice papers. Now, the RSGB have some papers online. Uh, your tutor, your course leader will be able to give you some, probably. Uh, there's some stuff online too, older stuff, especially for the advanced, from uh, a website from BRATS, B-R-A-T-S. I'll leave a link below. And also, there's a very good YouTube channel from an M0, and I can't remember his call, but I'll leave a link there as well. It is the older syllabus, but it's bound to be some crossover. So look at stuff like that to help you too. So as I say, don't leave it to the last minute, give yourself time, because revision is just as important as learning the stuff in the first place. So that's it really. Those are the practices that I advise my students to do. And that's the sort of stuff that you can do as well. Now, of course, we all learn in different ways. Some of us are practical learners, some of us are okay reading stuff out of a book, but it's kind of the same sort of thing really, the same sort of approach. Now you may have specific needs that you need to discuss with your with your tutor on the course or whatever, but please raise those. The RSGB should be able to accommodate anything that you might need in terms of extra time, uh, a reader, a scribe, or anything like that. Uh, exam boards are exam boards. So get those requests in early at the start of your course, or in fact, before you start your course, so that adjustments can be made for the exam and they're in place for you. Otherwise, have a good go at it. Don't be afraid of it. Have that strategy, boil it down, and give yourself time to do your revision justice, okay? All right then, so 7-3, thanks for watching. Hope to catch you again. This is G5TM wishing you good luck with your exams. Bye-bye.